So recently I was coming back from a vacation and something kind of cool happened during the flight back. The in-flight entertainment system had actually crashed. Uh, kind of a scary thing to think about, you know, having something crash while you're in a flight. But uh, luckily it was it was just the, the video and, and uh, entertainment system. So a little precursor of what was happening. So during the flight, uh, everything was, was normal, but the if you were watching a movie, uh, every five minutes or so, you, know, you would have a couple lost, uh, lost chunks of, of audio, you know, maybe a couple frames of audio that, that would just uh, drop out. The video would play normally. There was no real glitch as far as the interface was concerned. It was just the audio was dropping out. And so, as you saw at the beginning there, uh, just everything just went blank. And it was like, oh, okay, that's weird, you know. Uh, and then it just showed Air Canada. I was like, oh, wow, the whole system just crashed. That's, that's great. Um, but later on in the video, you'll actually see the, the, the startup process. And uh, it was cool to find out that it was actually a Linux system. I had a feeling that it was. Uh, and you'll actually see in the center of the screen, you'll, you'll see the XORG uh, logo or the, so basically uh, the graphic interface starting up. So all, the Air Canada is going to fade out here in just a second. And then, and then you'll see the XORG logo. And uh, I, I'm assuming that all of these displays have like a little thin client inside of them. So it's basically, you know, you've got power and then a data connection and then there's there's a built-in uh, computer in, in each one of these screens. The reason I say that is, is because they all boot up separately uh, speed-wise. So you'll, you'll have a couple that are faster than, than the other, you know, here and there. And, and you can see it in, in the video. Uh, I had a pretty good view of, of a bunch of people in front of me. So once this uh, Air Canada logo fades out, um, you'll you'll see it start to, to start up, and then so it'll show the XORG logo, and then after that it'll show a cursor. Okay, so here we go. So you can see the the guy next to me, his started up faster just by a little bit, uh, and now mine, and then everybody else is is going to show up. So we'll watch here for just a second. And we'll see who's going to start up first. I don't remember if it was, I think the guy next to me, he's going to start up first or the one in front of me starts up first. So we're still loading. And I, I they were at least, it was graceful enough that there wasn't any, okay, so there's the X org logo. There was never any text on the screen. So they at least didn't show any, you know, whenever Linux boots up, you, you always see all the text flying down the screen. You didn't see any of the terminal stuff going by, which was which was good. But if I saw that, I think that really would have made my day. This made my day enough as it was just to see the system reboot itself. So it, it was just a bunch of fun watching it. And I got to see it twice. So there we go. So now uh, there's, there's going to be a cursor that's going to show up on the screen. And... Let's just give it a second. It, it took a while. It took about five minutes for, for the whole system to come back. So there's the cursor. There we go. So we have a cursor. And then the whole cabin is going to start strobing. Look at that. It's just the coolest thing ever. I mean, it was eerie as hell, but it was just so cool to watch. So... The whole cabin strobes in succession three times. Uh, so I guess the system had to initialize the display three times. But look at that. It's it's just the coolest slash eeriest thing ever to happen. Um, so it does that a couple times. Now, this, the, this video, I don't remember if this was the first time it happened or the second time it happened. Uh, the first time it happened, it happened completely without warning. The second time, the system started up and it was running uh, like normal. And then 30 minutes uh, more into the flight, they were like, they got on the PA system and they said, "Okay, everybody, we're gonna reboot the system. We know that there's being problems and all this other stuff." 
So it does. Okay, so it just strobed again. So this this should be the third and final time that it strobes. And as you can see, I think this is the first time because if you see the guy, the flight attendant walking back, he's just like looking around, like what the hell's happening. Uh, so it, it was just very interesting for everyone. I don't even think the flight attendants were were expecting this. So uh, everything boots up, and you're gonna see the home screen come up here in just a second, and then everything will be normal. So there's the home screen, and I'll just freeze it there for a second, and then I'll show you the second uh, the second section that actually shows the system coming back. And uh, there, there was uh, a little bit of a communication error, so we'll show that to you next. So this is the second, uh, the second time the system had actually come back, and I'm actually going to show you it strobing again. It's just the weirdest sight. So there's the, the cursor on screen. Now, after the system had rebooted itself, uh, the overhead... Uh, reading lights and the notification for the flight attendant had actually disconnected. So here's the strobing again. Everybody's screens just start flashing like crazy. And then, uh, so I'm assuming that all of the lights, because this is a touch interface on, on the screen itself, uh, it's, it's talking to a hardware controller that, that turns on the overhead reading lights. Uh, and the also the in-flight uh, it, it tells you how far the flight is in in progress it'll say you know you're at this altitude at this direction and all that other stuff that had actually all failed uh, in in the system it, it never came back for the rest of the system so you can see everything boots up normal here but if you actually look at the bottom of the screen here uh, you can see that little picture of the airplane in the middle of the screen that would normally show you how far along the flight is. And I think we were halfway through the flight when, when this all happened. Uh, it never came back after the system rebooted the second time. It came back the first time it rebooted, but the second time uh, a lot of the uh, maps and different things that you can look at to show you where you are in the world, a lot of them weren't working after it rebooted the second time. So now we're going to watch these, uh, these two overhead reading lights. They started turning on and off randomly by themselves. And I don't know if this is part of the uh, initiation process uh, when the system came back. But the, the lights, they did this for probably about a half an hour, just turning on and off randomly. And it was only the two closest to me, I think. I don't think, I, I think I, had, I was lucky enough to have the only two lights that were just turning on randomly. Uh, the rest of the cabin was, was behaving pretty, pretty good. Uh, but I'll actually show you a picture on screen uh, showing that there was no communication between the lights. Uh, and you can see here that none of us were actually pushing any buttons to turn the, the, the lights on and off. They, they were just turning on and off by themselves. So there, there was some sort of disconnect communication-wise. So this picture here that I just put up uh, shows undefined for the uh, notification for the flight attendant, which is that second to last uh, button there. And then the, the bottom button, which is to turn on the overhead reading light, um, that was also undefined. And I, I just thought it was funny that it actually said undefined. Uh, you know, I you could see that there was a problem with the lights turning on and off. And then I went to go push the button to see if I could keep it off or keep it on and, and it had absolutely no effect. So th this this whole uh, situation was, was very fun and interesting uh, to see how the system actually worked and communicated with, with everything else. Everything was, you know, I'm assuming some sort of thin client with some sort of networking protocol talking to essentially a lot of different functions of the plane, the, the overhead lights, the, the notification system, the, the PA system. Another thing, if you've never been on one of these flights, when the, the flight attendant gets on, on the PA system to make an announcement, it actually plays through the, um, the overhead speakers and the headphones that you're wearing uh, as well. And it will pause any video or audio that you're listening to or watching and it will uh, 
force inject the audio from the PA system. So you've got those three systems plus the altitude, uh, the, the airspeed, the outdoor um, air temperature, and, and a whole host of other things that actually this system talks to. Uh, so I gotta imagine that the uh, that the positioning of the plane is probably a dedicated GPS, uh, and they just tell it where you're going and and uh, you know how long the flight's gonna be. But uh, it'd be really interesting to see if if it was actually if it had its own dedicated GPS or was it actually talking with the flight computer and have the flight computer give it some you know basic information I don't know so hopefully you guys like this video just something random that happened to me and and I just thought it was very fun and interesting and uh, and I'm in no way upset with Air Canada about this actually I thought it was it was quite cool to watch uh, especially the, the, the strobing of, of the screens. That was probably the best part for me. Just, you know, being up a, a, as high in the sky as you are, just to all of a sudden have everything just kind of like wig out, you know? <laughs> and I think I was probably the only person in the flight that actually had his phone out recording this, just, just out of curiosity. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment down below, all that fun stuff. Subscribe if you like this kind of crazy stuff. Uh, I, I like to record the, the oddities of, of technology failing or, or having problems. Uh, it's a lot of fun to, to see. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.